Hello everyone, this is the Codemaster here, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to do this kind of animation thing here. Now this isn't what your animation has to do, uh, this is just what I've chosen for this example. Now basically this is a new feature in the No Limits version 2.2, which allows you to use um, keyframing, like in Blender, or another program, to create an animation like this, um, without the use of any scripting. Now. I know a lot of you might want to know how to like do flat rides and stuff without scripting and this is definitely a huge step forward towards that. But today in this video I'm just going to show you how to animate something using Blender and import it into No Limits and make it have a fluid animation like this. Anyway, so of course the first thing we've got to do is go into Blender here. So I'm going to open up Blender and this is what you should get when you first start. Um, now, for this ver for this tutorial, I recommend you use the most up-to-date version of Blender. Um, mine is currently version 2.73. So, yeah. Uh, if you use that or later, this should work. Uh, I don't know about earlier versions, but all I know is that this version, this does work. Okay, so at the bottom here, uh, you can see we have a timeline. Now, we're going to be using this a lot um, in this because this is where we're going to be setting the keyframing. So first off, uh, if you have a model ready in Blender, go ahead and load it up. Uh, if you have a SketchUp model, you can try importing it. Uh, I don't know how, well I know how that works, but things I'm not going to go over it because there's about a billion tutorials online on how to do that, but yeah. So first thing you want to do is you want to go down here to where the two keys are, and you want to click on it and change it to LOC ROT Scale, or Lock Rot Scale. Now this is the keyframe type, um, and this is what Basically, when we click this key button down here, it will be saving the location, scale, and rotation of this. So, let's just start off by setting a location, rotation, scale keyframe, just for this position right here, by clicking this. And you'll notice on our timeline here, it's gone gold where our cursor is. Now, we're going to be making it so that it runs at 120 frames a second for the most fluid animation in-game. So that means that every 120 on here is one second. Now if your animation is longer, all you've got to do is go down to where it says end down here and change that to longer. But I'm going to be only doing it to about 180 in this one. So that's about three, no, about one and a half seconds. So yeah, so it starts at one and ends at 180. And to set the frame rate, you go to the camera tab on the side here. And where it says frame rate, you go down to custom and set that to 128. Oh, just 120 rather, not 128, my bad. Um, when you're at 120, it should work just as smoothly when it's in slow motion in the simulator compared to when it's running normally. Uh, this is, it, it just looks the most fluid. Anyway, onto the animation. So go ahead and put your cursor where you want the, how long, for like how long you want it to go for. So let's say in the next 60 frames or half a second, I want the cube to move this far to the right, this far up and rotate that much. What you do is you just do that and then you click the key and you'll notice if we drag the bar it will smoothly move to that location. Like that. Now you just got to do this for the rest of your animation so I'm going to make it so that at one second it's going to go over here, it's going to scale up, and it's going to rotate again. Like that, click the key and we'll see that it smoothly blends between the two. And finally at the end I'm going to set it back to zero by going to the uh, Object Properties tab and just setting Location, Rotation, and Scale back to zero. Oh, we want it back to be one on scale. There we are. Just like that, and setting a key. Now you can preview your animation by clicking the Play Animation button uh, with the shortcut that is Alt-A. So go ahead and do that, and it will play your animation. Just like that. watch over it, make any changes that you want, and if you're satisfied with it we can get on to the next step. Now just to show you what will happen if you import it in this state, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So all you've got to do is go to File, Export, Collada, and just export it as a DAE file, or a Collada file that is. You don't need to really modify with any of this on the side, just go ahead and export it. Uh, then you can go back into No Limits, and uh, you don't don't need to worry about what I'm doing right now, I'm just this is just a demonstration to show what happens if you don't do the next step. Now if you don't do the next step, uh, you will get something that looks like this. 
Notice how it snaps between the two points. It doesn't have any smoothness to it. It just kind of does it linearly. Now what we're going to do in this next step is we're going to add something called easing. Now this is this isn't too hard to do. It's actually relatively easy. Huh, easy easing. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to let's just drag this out a bit. You want to go to the final tab on the right hand side here with the cube selected, of course, um, which is the physics tab, and go ahead and click rigid body, and this will bring up this menu here. Now what you want to do is you want to uncheck dynamic and check animated and go down to the bottom here on our timeline and click the very left hand button here like this to reset it back to zero. Then just go ahead and click play on your animation and you'll see it will generate this kind of orangey bar at the bottom. Once it's gone all the way through you can go ahead and pause it and reset it back to the beginning because that's the process done. Now there's one more thing we've got to do. On the left hand side here there's a transform tab or the it'll say tools, create, all these kind of things down here. Now you want to click on the physics tab and click Bake to keyframes. Don't need to change any of these, just go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that it has filled the entire bar at the bottom here with keyframes. Now what this does is it basically makes it so that it the transformation is still linear, but it's between points that are so close together that you can't tell. So just go ahead, reset it back to zero, and export that to cube. And yeah. So now I'm going to show you how to actually get it into the game because I haven't actually shown you that yet. So what you want to do is you want to go to the NLSCO editor tab here and you will see here um, you want to create a new one. I've already created one called test and oh yeah I've already created one called test. Uh, you just want to put your 3D model cube.dae here and the only thing you have to do is just check this button here. Now if you wanted to start at a random time you can go ahead and check that but you don't really need to, unless you really want to. So go ahead and click save and place it down. And if you've done anything right, or everything right rather, um, you will see when we load it up, it will have a... Oh. Well, it has a more fluid animation, or it should have. This means I've done something wrong. Oh no. Did I export it properly? Let's find out. Ah. Oh, I forgot to reload it, my bad, because I didn't actually place it down. There we are. Okay, and now you should notice, um, once you've done that, it has a nice fluid animation, just like that. Now, this can be applied to multiple things. You can mo animate multiple things with a more advanced knowledge of Blender. But yeah, I hope you learned something from this, and you'll notice if we slow it down, it still looks nice and smooth. And even if we speed it up. Yeah, if you learned something from this, leave a comment. Um, well, if you did learn something from this, you don't have to leave a comment, but if you are having trouble with this, leave a comment. I'll try and respond to it if I can. Um, but yeah, if you have a suggestion for a future episode or a future tutorial, uh, be sure to leave a comment. And yeah, thank you very much for watching.